The Sea Kingdom on the surface looks like the perfect place to live in Wings of Fire. Though the Sea Wings are involved in the War of Samling Succession, thanks to their kingdom being underwater, they are very insulated from direct attacks. The oceans are also a large space, full of opportunities to make a life for oneself. With how big the kingdom is, part of it is still unmapped by a dragon. With all of that, if you had a choice of where to live in Pyria, you might think it best to live in the Sea Kingdom. However, just below the water, it becomes obvious that it's full of hidden dangers. The Sea Kingdom is a lot darker than you might think. Let's get into it. But before we get started, if you are new to this channel, please think about subscribing. I regularly post both Wings of Fire and Warrior Cats content so you'll never be bored. And to my current subscribers, thank you so much for supporting me, I wouldn't have gotten here without y'all. Let's start off with the educational policy of the Sea Wings, which is very questionable. The majority of the literature they read in schools is written by Queen Coral. Studying from one author does not make a rounded reader, no matter how good the author may be. The quality of Queen Coral's stories vary wildly as well. The Missing Princess is considered a classic in all the kingdoms, even where it isn't required reading, showing that at least that scroll has some merit. However, how the Sea Wings ended the Great War and saved the world, an essay that we got to see in A Guide to the Dragon World, is not of the best quality. The scrolls that the Sea Wings read in schools are also full of propaganda. In the scroll mentioned above, Queen Coral plays the victim to Blister, saying that she was caught off guard when she started to show more evil tendencies. She also justified the Sea Wings' seclusion in the closing months of the war as noble, brave, and necessary. She tried to take credit for ending the war as well, claiming that it was Tsunami's idea and Tsunami got her smarts and ideas from her. She also claimed that it was her plan all along to end the war that way. The education system of the Sea Wings revolves primarily of reading literature. Tsunami herself questions it, asking why they were focusing so hard on reading when they need to learn how to fight in the war. However, I have to say, at least the Sea Wings, compared to other tribes, have an educational policy. The Mud Wings have little to no formal education, and though the Rain Wings have a system of membership, they lack the core education that we have in our world on subjects like reading, math, science, or history. You can say a lot about the Sea Kingdom, but at least its citizens are not illiterate. The Sea Kingdom has a decent amount of classism. Coral and Whirlpool both refer to the eel-eating masses derogatorily. One can assume that eels are considered food for commoners, and the two are looking down on commoners with the comments. Even if Queen Coral is talking about wanting them to read her book, it's only so she can fluff up her own ego. A small piece of evidence that hints at the classism within Seeming Society is Queen Coral's scroll, The Puddle That Dreamed of Becoming an Ocean. Two of the themes listed are quashing silly ideas and knowing your place, which could be about commoners knowing their place in society. Queen Coral evidently writes a lot about the class divide and how much she hates the lower class. Another example of a scroll that Queen Coral wrote about the class divide is on the differences between oysters and clams. In our own words, it's an elegantly well-crafted metaphor about class differences and genetic superiority. That's eugenics. Plainly. Classism is evidently a sealing tradition. Over 2,000 years ago, classism existed within the Sea Kingdom. Indigo experienced a lot of classism from the royals growing up, as her family were commoners, even if they were high-class commoners. She was treated as a servant by the queen, despite being under the guardianship of Fathom's parents. Only once she proved herself by becoming the Animus Slayer was she respected in Sea Wing society. Even if you live or work in one of the palaces of the Sea Kingdom, you are not spared from the dystopia. The queen herself is a threat to her people. Queen Coral only lets dragons into her life wound flare her ego. That was the reason why she loved Whirlpool and allowed him so much influence. He constantly complimented her. The same thing happened with Blister, as they both shared a love of books and Blister said that her books were the best she ever read. Whenever someone speaks poorly of her politics, Queen Coral takes that as an insult to herself, and the criticism goes in one ear and out the other. Queen Coral does not care for any dragon outside of herself and her daughters. She neglects her sons to a ridiculous degree, and though she loves her daughters, she abuses them through her helicopter parenting. The Queen has no care about preserving the lives of any of her servants. She goes toward us for improperly protecting the hatchery in cold blood, and also threatening to do the same for her daughter. She was also fully willing to let soldiers bleed to death in her throne room. She was more concerned with cleaning up their blood than cleaning up their possible corpses. 
this was likely not a one-time occurrence either, judging by the way the guards talked about the incident. She is also a fan of collective punishments. She sent Webb's wife to the front after he kidnapped one of her eggs. After a group of guards violated her orders by freeing the DoD, they asked Tsunami to look after her families, showing that she's likely punished even more dragons this way in the past. The Queen cares more for her scrolls than the lives of other dragons. Instead of leading the evacuation effort to the Summer Palace after it got bombed, she was preoccupied with saving her scrolls and putting them in the water. In the text, it states that it was to prevent toxic fumes, but I mean the entire palace is burning. There are toxic fumes everywhere. Though the Sea Kingdom is currently staying afloat, who knows what will happen in the future. Without the war, dragons are now able to look more at their position in life, and they might find that it does not suit them well. And they might find that their queen is not the best queen. Will anyone replace her soon? I'm personally betting on Tsunami, but let me know in the comments section who you think will become the queen eventually. If you lived in a world of Wings of Fire, would you want to live in the Sea Kingdom? Comment down below. If you like this video, feel free to subscribe. I make Wings of Fire and Warrior Cats videos pretty often, and your support means a lot to me. And to those who are already subscribed, thank you for your continued support. I wouldn't have gone here without y'all. Peace, Rogan out.